Hello and welcome to English Shooting. My name is Aaron and in this video we're going to be talking about filming yourself when shooting practical. Now, there are many ways of filming yourself. You can do so by putting a head cam on your head, you can do so by asking a friend to film you on your phone, or you can put up a tripod and film yourself from a static location or a position of your choice when shooting a stage or doing general training. Now, there are many reasons why you would film yourself. One could be for the audience, you have a YouTube channel, you have an Instagram, you have a Facebook, and you really wanna show off your ability or even just show what you're doing, show that practical shooting is a sport, it's something you do, and you just wanna share that experience with others. Another reason would be probably because you want to train and you want to look at how you're doing things and improve upon them by reviewing the footage that you've got in place. And that's what we're gonna be focusing in this video. We want to be looking at ways that you can use filming and use video recording whilst you're training or shooting matches to improve upon yourself and find ways to be better for the next time you're doing a match or doing further training. There are many ways to film yourself when you are shooting. There is your POV where you have a head cam or a body cam of some sort that sees your hands or sees where you're shooting and what you're doing with your firearm. There is gun cams where it's on the gun itself and it allows you to see what you're aiming at what point during a stage. And of course, there's the most common, which is third person, where you're handing over your phone or your camera to a friend, or you've got it on a tripod and you film yourself from a third person perspective where your entire body or parts of your body are in play for you to review after you've shot the match or the stage. Now, I'm gonna tell you why only one of those methods is the right answer for when you want to look at training and reviewing the footage that you've got in place. And that is because the other two don't really encapsulate the real elements and the parts that you really want to look into when it comes to improving your skills as a practical shooter. Now, POV is great because it has a cool perspective, allows you to see what you're doing with your firearm, and to a certain extent, it is really cool for your audience because they get to feel like they're in they're in the cockpit of someone who's shooting. They, they can see exactly what you're doing. They can feel the rush. They can see you running around and everything like that. But it's missing the fundamental element. And this is the same issue with the gun cam. In fact, Gun cams are worse because you don't really see what you're doing with your firearm. You just see where the firearm is shooting. And that, to a certain extent, is rubbish. It's not going to be useful for you. It may help when it comes to you wanting to focus on your accuracy and where you're pointing your firearm. But that, for practical shooting, is quite easy to see without film. You can tell that you've missed the targets just from looking at your scores or even whilst you're shooting that match. We want to focus on elements that you don't see whilst you're shooting, elements that you have not a real awareness of until you see it on film. Now, third person's great because you're able to put the camera in a position that you yourself cannot be in. You can't look at yourself in third person. You, you cannot stand back and watch yourself shoot. You have to film yourself. Now, the great thing is you can watch other people shoot and see how their flaws and what they're doing wrong to, to be able to improve on yourself but you really wanna watch yourself shoot and find ways to improve upon yourself. And that's where filming in third person really comes to its benefits. So what equipment do you need to film yourself? Now, this seems like common sense. It, it is obvious. You really just need a phone or a very old camera. And everyone has one of those two things. If you're filming yourself, unfortunately, you will need a tripod, a stand, a high table, somewhere to be able to prop up your camera. And that is something you may need to invest in. Now, one thing I do recommend, especially if you don't want to use your phone, is to get an action camera. You do not need quality when you're looking at making training videos and trying to find ways to see yourself from an outer perspective to be able to review your movement, review your posture, review your shooting techniques outside of actually hitting the target to be able to cut the time that you have on each stage. When you're filming yourself in third person, you want to focus on your entire body. You don't want to be missing out your legs. You don't want to be missing out your feet. You want to film yourself moving across the entire stage. Now, this can be quite difficult when the stage incorporates a lot of movement in different places. However, that's why having a friend involved to move the camera around or even follow you if possible and safe with the RO in front can create benefits for you being able to film everything that you're doing in that stage. So coming back to what you're looking for, you want to look at how you are manipulating your firearm. 
and look for areas in which you can cut down on what you're doing, whether you're spending too much time trying to put your hand on the handguard, or you realize that the way you're holding your magazine may not be right when you're reloading, or it could be a way you're manipulating the firearm in general and you don't realize that you're manipulating it in a way that isn't the same as how you think you are, because there are times when you think you're doing something and you're actually not. Especially when it comes to a malfunction, you think you know exactly what you've trained when you have a stoppage. But when it comes to an actual stoppage, you find yourself dilly-dallying or doing something different. And that's where third person view really helps because you're able to see that instead of thinking about it in the moment because what you think in the moment may not be the same as what actually is happening in reality. So the next thing you want to look into when you're filming yourself in third person is your movement, the number of steps you take or how you're moving from point A to point B. The best way to do that is obviously to make sure that your third person perspective in your video incorporates your entire body because then you can see that movement. You can make sure that you can see each step you're making from when the timer goes beep to the last shot that you make on that stage. Another element you can look into which is quite advanced is to review your stage planning in comparison to how you actually run the stage when the buzzer goes off. You will find that you have a better understanding of what you have done when you've shot a stage, when you film yourself, because you can see what you planned and what you did in comparison, because sometimes you don't do what you've planned and things happen and change and you need to think about how you can negate that, whether it is missing a reload, such as moving into a shooting position that required you to be in a perfect position or finding yourself moving too far forwards towards an aperture when you could have shot from that aperture further away. These are little elements, advanced elements that help you improve upon your ability to shoot a stage and increase your hit factor. Another element of filming yourself is being able to review that footage with someone else, such as a coach or a performance instructor. This is a really cool benefit because they don't have to be there to watch you shoot. They can just watch the third person footage and help you with all the different fundamentals that come with practical shooting, such as your movement, your posture, your manual of arms, and the ability for you to stage plan because you can't personally look at yourself and teach yourself to do all the elements that there are in practical shooting. The sport always evolves and there are many ways of improving yourself. In fact, each year, every match, there is a new way of doing things and no way is always the best. There's always gonna be someone who finds an edge case that allows them to shoot really well. Don't forget that some of the best shooters in the sport have filmed themselves and use that footage to better themselves in the future. Whether it's during training or during a match, these videos help those professionals better themselves and find ways to improve upon their skill base. Let's talk about some of the case studies for using third person filming to improve your ability to shoot practical. Practicing your fundamentals such as handgun draws or starting positions on a shotgun or a rifle are a great way for you to review the way you move your body in order to get to the first shot. When you film yourself, you're able to review what you do from the start position to your first shot and focus on the small elements of your movement, such as where your hand placement is, where you move your gun. You're able to look at how you draw your handgun, for example, whether it's an LBP or a full ball firearm. It is worth noting that when you film yourself, you have the ability to use repetition and focus on the key elements of what you're filming so you can practice and perfect that part of your training. One thing I recommend you do if you're new to practical shooting is to film yourself doing dry fire exercises, such as drawing a handgun or going from your start position on a mini rifle or a shotgun to your first shot on a target. It is also worth focusing on how you reload your firearm, whether it's a handgun from a pouch, rifle mag from a pouch to your rifle, or quad loading, dual loading, or even loading a box fed shotgun. By filming yourself, you're able to review how you're moving and what you're doing from one position to the other. And that fundamentally helps you improve your skills and abilities without having someone else review it for you. In fact, you'll probably have better insight than someone who doesn't film themselves when they practice their dry fire exercises. And when it comes to live fire, whether you're doing it at a local shooting range or at a match, you are able to focus on different elements of what you are doing, such as how long it takes for you to start moving after the buzzer goes, or what you're doing when you're reloading on the move, reaching an aperture, or focusing on different targets at different ranges. 
It's also worth noting that you can use your footage to compare with other people who shot the match because you may not be the only one who's filmed yourself for that match. By doing so, you can do some peer comparisons and see how you shot a stage compared to someone else. Now, this is highly advantageous because if that person has done the stage quicker than you, you can review your footage in comparison to theirs and see what the difference was, whether it's their footwork, whether it's their timing, whether it's how quickly they shot a set of targets, or whether it's because they are just practically better than you. So what is your experience filming yourself when shooting? Do you have issues getting a friend to film you? Do you find that you don't feel like there's a purpose and you're just endlessly doing it out of habit? Maybe it's worth reassessing why you film yourself because sometimes just filming for an audience isn't enough. Training is a key fundamental part of improving yourself. So the next time you go training or shoot a match, ask a friend to film you. You'll probably find that you learn a lot more about what you're doing when you shoot and you're able to compensate for it or try to learn new exercises so you can better yourself for the next time you shoot a match or go back to do some training. Film yourself is accessible and you should try to do it because it helps you. Regardless of what you do with that footage, as long as you review it, you're able to see what mistakes you may be doing to then be able to practice and exercise it for the future. I've generally filmed myself naked with a gun in my pants. From personal experience, filming yourself in third person has been a force multiplier. It has enabled me to train the stuff that I do wrong and focus on the elements that I need to to be able to be better at practical shooting. To be honest with you, filming yourself in third person is something that helps you regardless of the sport, whether it's football, tennis, practical shooting, clay pigeon, you name it, filming yourself in third person can help you learn and train better. So what are your experiences with filming yourself when shooting practical? Is it something you do quite regularly? Is it something you just do for the audience? Or is it something you do to help you train better? I also want to ask what tips and tricks would you recommend to someone who started practical shooting and wants to film themselves to better themselves? Are there certain elements of filming yourself that you think could benefit in your ability to shoot with a higher hit factor. What do you use to film yourself when shooting practical? Do you film yourself naked in the bathroom? Have you ever filmed yourself ending? Do you know what butter really tastes like? Does the color pink really taste like candy? My name is Arian. This was a really hard video to film because it's been a while since I filmed a video and I hope to see you soon.